Hey everybody, today I'm going to show you how we pour a 1600 square foot concrete patio. Now we got this all formed up here a few days ago. We got some curved corners in this. We got styrofoam, two inches of styrofoam under it. And what the styrofoam does here, we live in Maine, so we go through a lot of freezing thaw cycles in the winter. And the styrofoam just helps keep the frost from getting under the patio and heaving it. We got wire mesh in here. We got the slab bolsters under the wire to help hold the wire up into the concrete. And we're using a 4,000 PSI concrete today with three quarter inch stone. We got microfiber mesh in it also. And we're just going to get this very large patio poured for this customer. And you're going to have to let me know down in the comments what you would do for a finish on this. Would you? If this was your patio, would you do a broom finish? Would you do a stamped concrete finish? Or would you do some other type of finish? And let me know down in the comments. But I want to show you today how we're going to pour this. This is a little more difficult than just pouring, you know, a regular house floor or a garage slab. It has a lot of slopes to it. It slopes in multiple directions. It slopes away from the building three inches and then it also slopes towards that concrete truck there where he's parked so we're trying to get all the water or at least most of the water to kind of run towards where that concrete truck is going and that's where the driveway is also for this place now we're using the conveyor truck today because this was about a 40 foot reach from where he's parked to the other end of this slab so rather than get a pump truck or wheelbarrow it or try to use a extended chute that conveyor will reach just about 40 feet so it makes it pretty easy to do a pour like this it costs us a couple hundred bucks more to get the conveyor truck but if it makes the job a little easier it's well worth it now what we're doing right now is we're wet setting a double roll rebar around this outside edge just to help reinforce the edge of the slab a little bit more this is basically, on average, about a four inch thick patio. Um, there were some spots that were five, but for the most part it was four inches thick. For you guys that don't know me, you know, my name's Mike Day. I specialize in all types of concrete flat work. So if you like that kind of stuff, you know, please, if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead down there and hit that little red subscribe button and hit that little bell notification too. It'll notify you whenever I come out with a new video. I come out with a couple videos a week, usually Mondays and Fridays, all about concrete things, so you can learn. I'm trying to teach the next generation of concrete finishers is what my goal is, so you can help me out by subscribing to the channel and sharing the videos. Now we're going to get most of that truck, or all that truck really, poured right out. And the reason, we just want to get him done, get him out of the way, get him back, so the batch man can use them for somebody else and then just get that second truck in there so he holds about nine and a half to ten yards of concrete on that truck and we'll just get it dumped right out now what Luke and I are doing right now is we're, we're wet screeding a pad there to go by in the middle we use the laser level to shoot a wet pad that round pad right where those stakes are you can see a metal stake sticking up in the middle we had a nail through there to go by and that was the level of the concrete and then we just double check it with the laser and now we can each he, Luke can screed off the outside form if he wants or he can use that pad we mag and I'm going off the wet pad in the middle and that'll make sure that we have the concrete sloped the right way so lucky for us, we had a long enough screed that we could both get on the outside of these pads, which makes the screeding pretty easy. And we just like to, to drag it across the surface like this, making sure that we're both scoring on our pads, keeping the screed tilted slightly backwards so the front edge doesn't dig in. Now on the other side, Darren and I have to actually kick what we call kick screed, so We'll just kick our boots backwards as we screed the concrete, fill in our, our foot tracks in it by kicking them, and then we can just keep screeding the concrete that way. You can see Eric had just finished up making that other wet pad in the middle. Now we're getting that other truck back in. He's got ten and a half yards on him. 
We don't have too many front loading truck concrete trucks here where we are. most of them are the rear discharge like this some of the companies have a few of them but not too many yet so everybody's got a job Eric's putting the rebar in the edge Luke's bowl floating Darren and I are screeding Tia's puddling the concrete behind us that's what makes pouring these pretty easy for us is everybody knows what to do and it also makes it pretty fast so we can get the concrete in before the sun gets up the sun's coming up on the other side of that house and behind those trees so we, I mean we started pouring at about 6 a.m. this morning where it's nice and cool again let me know down in the comments what you think we're gonna do for a finish on this and then what also what you would do for a finish what kind of finish would you like on this something like this if it was at your house so we'll get that second truck started it looks you know looking at uh, yardage figures it looks like we're doing pretty good here we got at least halfway with that first truck so we definitely don't want to run out of concrete on something like this and have to wait for a balance so I always try to order at least a yard extra on, on a job like this You can see how Luke's getting all that bull floated using those long handles to reach as far as he can. That was a good 30 some odd feet across there from the house out to the, like where the laser is over there on the right. So this is going to be one heck of a patio slab when we're done with it. Now, if you want to learn how to do slabs like this, I got the rest of this training video, the forming, setting it up, the, all the prep work, the finishing is all inside the Concrete Underground, guys. And what that is, that's my training academy. And I'll have a link for that down in the description of the video where I go into a little more detail with uh, training tutorials, teaching you guys how to do concrete work like we do. So you can join the Concrete Underground. Uh, I've got multiple trainings in there already. I'm, I'm adding a new one each month. And uh, it'll help teach you to be able to do concrete like I do. And also, I'm in there too. So if you got any questions about things, I can help you with that. I can help you if you're starting your own business. I can help you with that. That's all inside the Concrete Underground, guys. Now we're coming down the side of the garage. And we got a pretty good, you know, it's about 10 feet out from the garage, the patio area over here. And that garage was 40 feet deep. So it's a pretty good section all on its own. You can see that curve there to the left. We used uh, some landscape edging for that piece right there. That was a pretty sharp curve. And then we just pounded in our metal stakes about every six or eight inches to keep the curve nice and nice and rounded my job's usually running the shoot you know I uh, I guess that's what the boss does mostly so I'll run the shoot I'll control the truck I'll control how much how fast the concrete's getting dumped out and how much we dump out before we stop and screed the concrete down and then if I have to move and reposition the truck like I'm doing now, you know, I'll do that while these guys keep going. And I, you know, the good thing is I don't have to tell these guys what to do. I just focus on doing my thing and keeping things going. And all these guys know the process real well. So we got, looks like we got maybe a little bit less than a yard of concrete left to pour out there. And then we'll get this done. Let me know also down in the comments, you know, what state you're from. Do you do you guys have freeze and thaw like we do here in Maine? Um, and if you do, have you ever seen anybody put styrofoam under it like we do? We do probably most of our patios have styrofoam under it like this. You know, if and if you if you've got a really good gravel base and everything's gonna slightly slope away from the patio so you don't have rain water or anything like that coming under it then you're probably going to be okay 
and you might be able to get away without using it but it's just it's just good insurance you'd never want something like this to move and heave and crack all up so putting the styrofoam under it definitely helps ensure that so T is finishing up bow floating over there she's uh, she does a real good job bow floating and then what we'll do is we'll get the last little piece of that screeded like like we did right there now Darren's gonna finish the bull float and we're gonna get all the tools washed up and then we got time you can see the Sun coming up over the trees we'll have time to, to get ready for the finishing process so that's it guys that's a that's a 1600 square foot concrete patio thanks for watching and and come back again